This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 334 of the Dressage Radio Show on the Horse Radio Network. Nicola Smith of New Zealand gets recent Philip in shape with her dressage rider training. And Hillary of Dressage Today is back with more great riding tips by Total Saddle Fit. Plus, Reese is off to nationals. Listen in. This is Reese Koffler Stanfield from Georgetown, Kentucky. And this is Philip Parks from Rockwood, Ontario, and you're listening to the Dressage Radio Show. With our producer, Glenn, who's back helping us. Hey, guys. Good to talk to you again. It's been a while. Yes. We're always glad when you're here, Glenn. It just makes us a little more calm. I think it's been since Reese, you know, won everything at regionals, and now is, I, I haven't even talked to you since then. So congratulations. Well, we did win, but we hit the wild card score. Yeah, I mean, so you're there. Who cares? So you're yeah. there. That's what counts. <laughs> you're going to nationals. Yeah, going to nationals. Which, now, is you know, that next is, week also? We actually have Breeders' Cup here next yes. week. Yep. And you also have the thoroughbreds. There's 300 thoroughbreds coming in for a big competition. This weekend. Yeah. Yes. Um, and that is going to be one busy park. <laughs> it is really busy. It's going to be crazy. Well, that's this weekend. And Julie Hall, who we did an interview with Monopolize, uh, is going. We did this interview in the spring. Uh, she talked to us a little bit about the program, and it's uh, the Thoroughbred Racehorse Project. Right. And um, it's really cool. It's all four-year-old thoroughbreds. They had to start training in. December and then the sort of the culmination is this weekend and there is a big event team challenge so it is going to be a crazy there are event. over 300 horses coming yeah for that. just for that and then you have the event I mean it's going to be it's going to be a hot mess probably but well I did um, talk to I wanted to tell you we uh, got a little sneak peek and got an interview with the guy who's in charge of marketing for the Breeders Cup today oh, cool. and we just recorded that a minute ago and uh, they're very excited over there at Keeneland obviously yes. yeah yes. they put in and a whole bunch of temporary Yep. They've increased the space. They can fit about forty five thousand now. Yeah, I was uh, there over the weekend. Were you? And, yep. And there are lots of temporary structures, and there's going to be. Um, if if in, you do come to Lexington uh, to to go, if you don't have tickets now, you're probably out of luck. But um, and parking is not on site, so you should know. Oh, that really? I was wondering where they were going to park all those people. I think they're parking Airport? at the first park, actually, and busing them to Keeneland. So really, that's a out. distance. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is. So, so look at look at your tickets. Get the information if you're coming in for Breeders' Cup. Uh, Philip's going to be here, but I think we may go downtown, or we're not going to go. Now they did say no, they're setting not. up a big uh, tailgating area on the hill there. Yeah, and they're going to have big screens and all that kind of yep. stuff, so you don't have to go into the to the you know to the track yeah, and yeah. we may do that i mean it's it just will depend on the weather and what's going on and but there's lots of fun stuff here in lexington that next week almost like um wag it sounds like wag, wag. it's very yeah, similar wag, yep, yeah it's very similar to the wag lots of things going on downtown and concerts and so it should be a really fun week here so Yay. we're looking forward to it yeah so lots of stuff going on and then that is also the same weekend as the national horse show and then we go right into the usdf national finals so it is very busy here in Jeez. lexington <laughs> in the next couple weeks uh, so everything horsey seems to be happening here which well is while cool. you guys are there in lexington we'll be at uh, monty roberts flag is up farm with debbie and Monty's wife, Pat, and we'll be staying there for the weekend watching it on their big screen TV. Oh, that'll be so super fun. In California. Wonderful. Yeah. That's cool. great. That'll I knew you knew Debbie, so I, I wanted yeah. to let you know that we'll be out there and hanging out with them. Cool. Uh, so Very that'll be cool. fun, too. Yeah, so we have, you know, just lots of fun stuff going on. We'll keep you guys posted on how it goes and how Breeders' Cup goes, and, and we'll be ready for that. So, Yay. and then... uh yeah, we'll talk to you. I think we'll actually talk a little bit early the week of the national finals, and I'll give you guys an update on how we're doing and and go from there. Sounds good. Next week, of course, we'll have Para. But you have a show planned for this week. We do. We have an awesome show. So coming up uh, first is Nicola Smith, and she is she is a fantastic um, trainer. So we're going to talk a little bit of fitness. I think it'll be great kind of going into the holiday season. Uh, Maybe we can get a jump start uh, on the holiday season. And so she's going to be fantastic. She's coming to us from New Zealand. And then we have uh, Hillary Moore Hebert back from Yay. maternity leave. Yes. So we'll have to hear how being a mama is. She is the most precious little man. Uh, he's so cute. Um, and so we have her on the show and she's back to talk to us what's happening at Dressage Today. 
So really excited. Very good. Well, let's uh, take a break for Mill Creek Spreaders, and then we'll go, Which where, who are we going to first? We're going to Nicola. We're going to talk about a little bit of um, fitness work before the holidays. They've made the best even better. Mill Creek Manufacturing is now the first and only company to make stainless steel compact manure spreaders. What does that mean for you? A worry-free solution to your manure management for years to come. Often, if a body on a spreader rusts, it's time for a new one. We've had that happen. We certainly had some old spreaders that rusted out. Mill Creek stainless steel spreaders are guaranteed not to rust through for life. These are the only compact manure spreaders you'll find anywhere with a warranty like that. There's also a three-year warranty on the mechanics and structure. Put this together with Mill Creek's exclusive low-maintenance sealed bearings, and you've got a machine that you can count on to perform day in and day out with no headaches for you. The stainless steel option is available on six of Mill Creek's models, from the popular 27, suitable for up to four horses, to the Big Daddy 127 for over 20 horses. Two of the models can be ordered with either ground or PTO drive. Like all Mill Creek spreaders, stainless steel spreaders have the lowest sides in the industry for easy manure loading. You can't go wrong with any Mill Creek manure spreader, but the new stainless steel models are truly something special. You've never seen anything like them before. Mill Creek has been in business for almost 30 years, and they've continuously improved their designs with horse owners in mind. Horse owners like you and I, who appreciate the best quality, best engineered machines on the market. When you call Mill Creek, you'll reach them at their own factory in Pennsylvania. That's right, not in India, but in Pennsylvania because they're all made in the USA. Give them a call today at 800-311-1323 or visit their website at millcreekspreaders.com. That's millcreekspreaders.com. Well, this evening, we are so happy to have Nicholas Smith, from dressageridertraining.com. She is a nutritionist, personal trainer, and she specializes in wellness. Nicola, welcome to the show. Hey, thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. We're excited. We've never interviewed someone from New Zealand, so this is fun for us. You have to get used to my accent then. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Well, Nicola, we were chatting right before we got on the air that actually one of my students sent me your website, and I went to Facebook, and I have started following you, and um, can you tell us a little bit about how you started the website and just get us started? Yeah, so I, I'm a personal trainer by trade, and I actually run an online gym, so my main website is foreverfit.tv, and this is where I share everything wellness, but I have a passion for dressage and my I ride horses in every hour spare that I have and so I wanted to combine my passion for wellness and to be able to help riders because I was seeing riders not taking care of their own health and so I created a dedicated site to help riders with their health and their well-being and so this is what dressage rider training is all about it's just sharing all my wellness advice but directing it towards riders. Awesome. Nicola, maybe you can tell us a little bit about the different aspects of the dressage rider training website. I see you have a blog and, and you do a newsletter. What other, what other uh, things that you do on the, from, from the web? Um, so I have a dressage rider training um, core program that's dedicated to helping riders improve their core and then it's the entire website where I'm constantly sharing a, a new blog post every week helping people with everything from exercises through to stretches, through to nutrition or food to give them more energy, sleep, um, all those sorts of things of just ways they can improve their day-to-day habits and life so that they can ultimately thrive as a rider, whether they're just somebody who's doing it for pleasure or doing it competitively. Like There's nothing worse than after a long day's work if you actually haven't got the energy to do do the things you actually love to do, like riding horses. And so that's where I want to help people is just so they can enjoy their sport more. Well, and it's true. I mean, it's so hard by the time, you know, even for myself, you know, my barn and the horses is my job. But, you know, I know I need to work out. But just kind of carving in that time is really difficult (laughs) along with eating well and and making nutritious food. So give us a tip on how our listeners or in myself um, can kind of work some sort of workout into the day. First, like where I like to start with people is just to think about their day-to-day environment that they put their body into. 
often we think that a workout has to be an hour long and it has to be really exhaustive and it has to be time consuming and we have to get out of our jobbers and we have to get on some flash gym gear. <laughs> but it's when you've got a, a lifestyle and a and a day that involves good movement, then you can short fit in, you know, a 10 minute workout or 10 minutes of exercises to help rebalance your body so that you've got good posture and balance on the horse. But often we what ends up happening is we spend our lives sitting at a desk or driving cars or we stand lopsided and then we we put our body into this environment day in and day out which creates poor posture um, tight hip flexors um, weak glutes or just a completely imbalanced body then we feel really stiff and rigid and then we try and hop on our horse and and we're either tired and exhausted but then we wonder why the horse is leaning on one rein where all of this is affected by the environment that we put our body into each day and so I start with getting people just looking at the day-to-day little things that they can do that don't, doesn't even involve working out, but that can enhance their riding and not, you know, not impact it so that they can enjoy it more. So little things like if you do run an office job, how can you bring more movement into your day or how can you set your desk up or sit correctly so that you're actually strengthening your riding posture while you're sitting versus um decreasing your riding posture yeah well even just sitting here at the desk doing the show and I I don't sit at a desk very often but you know I can find when when you came on I I sat up a little taller I'm not gonna lie um but it's easy to sort of slouch or you know put your leg up or or whatever while you're doing while you're working and it's terrible posture um so I can imagine if you sit at a desk for eight hours a day it's a completely different thing for your body so just even just paying attention to it and your your online um, newsletter that, that I get kind of helps me do that because I see it and I'm like, oh, oh this is something I need to do. <laughs> so um, what other tips do you give for someone that sits at a desk? Like give us, give us one tip on how I can sit here better while we're talking. So one of the ways would be just to understand what a neutral spine feels like. So when you sort of sit at a desk, you might sort of, rock back on your chair and slouch through your spine and your shoulders become rounded. And so I like to set people up so that they think of um, a strong, stable, neutral spine. So if you imagine lifting up from your tailbone right through to the crown of your head and then putting a gentle tuck through your chin, rolling, rolling your shoulders back and almost putting a smile across your collarbones and then um, Brace, bracing through your core so that you're able to stabilize through your spine. So if you imagine you were sitting on an unstable environment, like a horse, imagine you're sitting there, but you're keeping that really strong, stable posture. And so if you were someone who was on a laptop, like I, I run an online business, so my, if my, if my laptop's at the wrong height, my, my head drops forward and my shoulders round and my back slouches and everything gets affected. So just sit, setting your desk up so that you can have good posture is, is a great start. And then looking at things like, um, you know, how you use your phone. Often people will be, if they're texting on their phone, they kill their entire spine and they drop their head forward and tuck their chin and they slouch back and even things like that can affect um, your posture and your health and not and ultimately your riding as well. So Little wee things like that, just to be aware of how you're sitting each day is a big thing. Yeah, that's awesome. You've also got a lot of, I'm, I'm checking out the website, and you've got a lot of sort of mental tips and mental things that, that riders should be thinking about, you know, sort of, I see an article on building confidence. So talk about the mental aspect of, of riding, and, you know, fit and your own fitness. What, what are some things that people need to think about for, for, that, for that part? Yeah, so my whole philosophy is I look at a human being as a whole, like we're we're connected, um, our thoughts are connected to our body and our our body's a complete system of systems. So if you um, don't take care of the way you move your body, you don't take care of the way you um, fuel your body with food, all these things can affect your emotions. And so the way we set our days up and the way that we structure um, 
you know, our goals and setting things just have a huge impact on our writing. So that's why I bring a lot of um, mindset sort of things and goal setting into what I do because if we don't have goals, then we wonder why we never get better. And if we don't, <laughs> we don't kind of um, work, have goals, then we don't want to work on our posture. And then if we don't have goals, we don't want to work on our health and our fitness. And so all of these things have a knock on effect. And so when you understand that everything's connected and you get yourself a goal and your goal might be simply that um, you want to have the health and fitness to be able to ride your horse five days a week versus um, at the moment you can only do it a couple of times because you don't have the energy to be able to get out there and ride after work. Or your goal might be that you've got four horses to ride when you get home from work and you need to be able to keep that fitness. So when you've got the goals, you can then put things in place and develop the right mindset to structure your day so that you can achieve them and put things in place. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah. It's fantastic and very helpful. Um, so, Nicola, tell us a little bit about your website and how our listeners can kind of go on it and what are the services offered on the website? Yeah, I was wondering about this online boot camp that I'm, I'm looking yeah, at here. Mm, talk, that I need yeah, to talk do. about that program Phil, and the, Phil, and the should we do this? programs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm I'm sharing that with riders at the moment. So I I run an online boot camp. We do these twice a year, and these aren't just for dressage riders, but because it's a complete health um, program where you've got nutrition, meal plans, fitness, we do um, goal setting and mindset advice, and there's meditations, and there's, it's got everything included, and it runs, um, yeah, so twice a year, and. We have like leaderboards and prize givings at the end of it and it's all online. So people are doing it in their living rooms and it is just such an awesome thing that we do. Um, people get really into it and yeah, members from all over the world. So that's why I've shared it on the Dressage Rider Training site is because it's just a really cool way to get motivated and kickstart your health. But we also have um, free guides where you can get your um, the self started if you're not sure where to begin I've got a um, free guide on there where it just gives you tools on simple stretches you can do and how your environment does affect your horse and just little wee strategies you can put in place and then I also have um, dressage rider specific training program that is dedicated just for dressage riders so it's all about helping them improve their core through to some yoga mobility and stretching as well yeah, it's awesome. And and like the Dressage Radio <laughs> Show, you there's a podcast as well. Tell us a little bit about what you what you bring, you know, po through through the podcast media. Yes, yeah, so the podcast show that I do is all about wellness. So that's everything to do um, from um, yeah nutrition through to um, exercise and fitness and movement. Um, I cover a lot on fatigue and um, what was my last one on. Um, I, I go over a lot of studies that might be coming out as well. So it's just everything that's kind of really relevant in terms of wellness and helping you thrive. Like my my philosophy is helping you lead a life that energizes, inspires you. So whether that's through dressage or through um, some other aspect of your life, that's what my, my whole aim is, to help share information on all aspects of that. Oh, I think it's fantastic. And certainly something I think, um, and, and what I find in the newsletter is it's a nice reminder and it's just, hey, come on, keep it up, you know, keep doing it. And for, for me, that's what I need the most. Um, so it's almost, you're almost kind of like a personal trainer in the sense of you're getting information and it just sort of reminds you. Uh, but Philip, maybe you and I need to do the boot camp there, buddy. I think, that be, I think that would be good for us. I'm just saying. I'm just yeah. saying. Everything. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. I'll do the online boot, boot camp with you. I'll call Pick you up. up or we'll just do it on Skype together and, and we'll have exactly. our own little workout group. <laughs> Nicola, we need it. Well, Nicola, how do our listeners find your website and find out all the information? So it's at dressageridertraining.com. Fantastic. Yeah, it's very yeah. simple, and the website's super easy to use, and I would absolutely recommend Nicola's um, newsletter. I really like getting it. So, Nicola, thank you so much for coming on the show, and for sure, keep up the good work. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Hi, 
Hi, this is Gina Moronic from Wisconsin, and I am an official Horse Radio Network auditor. It's something I'm really proud to do and to be a part of in a small way because it's something that I get a lot of information from. The Horse Radio Network uh, and the convenience of the downloadable podcasts means that I can improve my horsemanship skills, my riding skills, um, or just really enjoy listening to friendly, informative programming whenever I'm driving to work or working on chores or at the barn even. So I hope you find it as enjoyable as I do. If you do, go to horseradionetwork.com and click on the banner to become a Horse Radio Network auditor. For as little as a dollar a month, you can be involved in this great thing too and keep it going. Thanks. Well, today for our total saddle fit tip of the week, we have back from maternity leave and we're so happy to have her back hillary moore hebert contributing editor to dressage today hillary welcome back hi guys <laughs> well we have to ask really quickly what's it like to be a mama um it's very good it's it's actually i was joking the other day i don't know everyone says that um and i'll probably get killed for this but everyone says that motherhood is the hardest job but i think that <laughs> Having done that and also running a barn, I, I am not sure that that's the case. <laughs> There's times that I'm teaching or managing things at the barn, and I'm like, I wouldn't mind just going back inside and laying down with the baby. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Well, managing a barn, I think managing a barn is probably as similar to motherhood as you could get. With yeah, except for everybody can talk back to you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they're not cute most of the time. And they don't make yeah. cute little noises and smiles and stuff. Well, we are so happy to have you back. We really missed you for the couple months you were off. So um, how? let's get started. What do you have for us today? Okay, well, the first thing that I wanted to mention, and this is down in your neck of the woods, Reese, um, is the um, blog that we have with Louise Robson. She's talking about um, the program that uh, is going on right now at the Kentucky Horse Park um, with the Retired Racehorse Project. And she is really cool. She's actually from England, so she traveled overseas. And um, if everyone is fans of the royal family, she actually takes retired racehorses that belong to Queen Elizabeth, and she turns them into dressage horses. And we've done some training articles on her that you can find online where she talks about retraining thoroughbreds. But um, the poor thing got to the United States, and they unloaded everything, and she found out that a lot of her tack and equipment was missing from her bags. But I thought it was really funny in her blog, and you guys can kind of follow everything that's going on with her. She talks about having a spare bridle in her carry-on, which only a horseback oh, yeah, rider, yeah, yeah. <laughs> rider would ever think oh i need to carry my yeah, bridle good on for her. <laughs> oh my gosh did she ever saddle or did that get uh no i don't think so and i think she's missing blankets and when they left and everything it was like 78 degrees there so i think she got hit with all the cold weather that we're experiencing so i think that she was definitely sort of struggling to get everything worked out and i'm curious to know in her upcoming post what becomes of that but I thought it was an interesting thing to think about that you know you can end up riding horses for the queen and be coming to a new country and you know all the best laid plans can never work out so I thought yeah the airlines they're going to lose horse luggage too right oh yeah yeah (laughs) so I thought you know as we're going into the holidays it was just a nice little tip uh, you know, I, I will think about this forever. Always carry a spare bridle in your yeah. carry on. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Poor thing, but that is a really big thing going on this weekend. Um, I think there are over 300 horses that are competing uh, in this retired racehorse project. So uh, they have a great website, and if anybody wants to, it starts, I think, January 15th. You have to register, and you can start training your horse at that time. But there's some money involved. Yeah, and, there's some, there's some yeah. good prize money there, yeah. isn't there? We talked about it yeah. before, but... Um. Yeah, and fantastic for the thoroughbreds, her. right? Yep, exactly. So well, I, I look forward to seeing her, for sure. So I have some friends who are doing it, and I obviously don't know as much as I should because I've been, you know, out of contact with reality. But So you can just bring a horse in in any discipline, and then it's just sort of, you know, showing off what they've learned. 
That's right. I, it, to my understanding, and we could all look on the website, but it, it's it's a four year old, and and I have I've been working with somebody with a, with a four year old that's competing this weekend, so that's how I kind of know what's going on. But basically, um, you have it's a four year old thoroughbred that has to start training in their new discipline no earlier than January fifteenth, I think, and then basically mm-hmm. you have from January fifteenth to October twenty fourth um, to retrain your horse or get it ready for the project for this program and you can there's eventing there's dressage there's um hunter jumper there's and and there are other disciplines as well so yeah you just bring your horse and you kind of show off your horse and um then you there's a material class for the dressage horses and then the test then they're riding uh first level or sorry training level test two training two and then they can go after their training two, you have a two minute sort of time you can show off your horse after your test. And then mm-hmm. if you make the finals, then you essentially can do a freestyle for four minutes. So oh, that's nice. cool. That's yeah. really cool. Yeah. yeah. So um my my horse, Julie Hall and Monopolize, that's who I'm working with. And and it's been a really fun project to work on and, and see this horse develop. So it should be fun. I'll, I look forward to seeing her there for sure. I think it's very interesting to see, um, having done the articles with Louise about, um, you know, what they have going on with the breeding over in England, um, because the horses, in terms of the thoroughbreds and their conformation, I remember watching, um, you know, some of the turf races when we've had the triple crown going on, and they have talked about how they really breed those horses to have ability at, you know, the turf racing, and so I think it's just cool to see the difference between the American thoroughbreds and the ones that they have over there. So I'll be curious to see how her horse, you know, does and what he looks like and everything during this competition. Yeah, it's going to be fun. <laughs> so what's our next tip? Okay, so, um, you know, speaking of events that are going on, Margaret Freeman has a really neat blog that she has on the website and she was just at, um, I believe, the Region 9 Championships, and she judged from E, which I think um, is always the Achilles heel of competitors. If you get to the regionals, and a lot of times it's the first time you have someone looking at you from the side. Um, And I think her feedback was really interesting, but what the main theme was was that she saw a lot of people who – all season had been getting away with, you know, 22 meter circles or a little bit of a, a lazy transition on from the, you know, canter lengthening back because the judge at sea can't see it. And she was saying how for some people the difference in points between like first and third was, you know, so minuscule. It would have been the difference between how clean what that single transition was or how tight that circle was so I thought it was interesting because I think again that's you know a theme throughout dressage of having you know accuracy so that you have quality and I think that that's very helpful to think about because I think you know just like you always want to travel with a bridle in your um, carry-on I think you always want to think about not just having um, you know your uh, judge at sea, but I think you always want to feel as though someone's watching you from every angle so that you really ride everything correctly. That's a great point, Hillary. I think that, you know, in preparation for regionals or nationals, um, maybe you should take a video from, if you've been sort of, if you use your videos from sea, then then take one from the side and, and think about your accuracy. So that I think that's part of preparing for a competition, like a bigger competition where you're going to have more than one judge. Maybe you have two or three and and then you got to be super accurate in in all places right and just really like you said nailing those transitions that are going to be on the long side not just the ones at c and a and uh and for sure working on your halts because your halts are going to now have to be you know i i think that's one of the biggest things because you do two halts in every test and i i know for sure that a lot of riders are not halting at x or halting a little before x or a little after x and now you're going to get nailed on that right because you can definitely get you know take a seven down to a six or a five depending on you know where the legs are lined up you know and and all of that so uh yeah part of being prepared for for the next level of competition is is uh thinking about where the judges are going to be 
Yeah, and I always like more more than one judge. I don't know how about how you guys feel, but I always like having judge more than one judge because I feel like it does give you a better perspective. And um, you know, if you have a judge that really loves you and you have a judge that really hates you, you'll kind of come out with the the right score. Um, yeah, I think so. for sure. Yeah, I, I think you get to a better, more accurate score that way. Yeah, and that's what I tell my students. You know, enjoy well, enjoy I- more. Yeah. And I think I'm going to throw myself under the bus here because I went to a championship many years ago and um, I had two judges that were very top, top judges. I mean, people who have, you know, are really the cream of the crop. And I was quite nervous and I had been doing very well all season with a horse that's, you know, sort of interesting and Um, You know, the way that you see, for example, some people have um, non-traditional breeds that score very well with some judges and some not so much. And I went in thinking that I had my act together and um, the two judges were there and one of them gave me the score that I had been getting all season and the other judge gave me a really bad score. And in the comments below, she said, Horse was not honestly on the bit for an, a single stride of the test. Oh. <laughs> and um, yeah. I was, she scored me last in the class. And you know what? As someone who's a professional, it was the best advice and the only really honest advice that I had gotten the entire year. And I know a couple people now who I've had as students who they've had that where some of the judges are like, you know, horse not ready for the level. And they really, you know, tell it like it is. But I think sometimes it can help to have two judges because you can get feedback. And I think it's helpful to have it be on the same day. So instead of lying to yourself and saying, oh, you know, it was just an off day and so and so, if you have it where you have two judges and one scores, you know, sort of well and the other one really knocks you down a point for every test, or sorry, for every movement, you start to say, okay, the other judge was giving me like a 61, but that was not so much that she was loving me. It's that she just has a different methodology. And I need to recognize that I, you know, if I had done it properly, I would have been getting in the seventies with her. Then to have that other judge kind of have the methodology where everything's a point lower and you really get hit with it. You start to see, okay, all of my scores, the whole, season you know we're in the 60s but really I should have had an expectation of much higher than that so I I think it was one of the biggest learning moments that I had you know with that horse was for her to say that I think that's a great point Hillary you have to look at you know it's it's perspective when you get a low score and we all have and we all do and we will continue to to get low scores sometimes you know how do you look at it do you think oh that judge was wacko and they're way out in left field and I I get 70s and and or do you say, you know what, does that, does that judge have a point? You know, is there something I could do at home? And, and really, you know, it can be a motivational tool to get you to train and, and to get you to, to uh, you know, really polish things or whatever the issue was that the judge brought up. You know, maybe, maybe that's something that you should look at. And I think that's, you know, that's all mentally how you're going to take a bad score and what you're going to do at home. Or are you just going to ignore it? And, you know, maybe you have that judge at a finals or a championships and they're going to score you low again. And, you know, so I think, um, you know, that's a great way to, to look at things and, and really, you know, have to hunker down and maybe fix the problems that they brought up. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And, you know, judging is a really hard job. <laughs> and yeah. we've all complained about judging, and, you know, yeah. <laughs> but at the end of the day, um, I've done very limited judging and oh, it's really hard. It's very, very hard. So yes, you know, but I, I totally agree with what you guys are saying. And that is you have to really look at it, see why they scored you low. Um, and, and maybe it was just on geometry. You know, if you do a 15 meter, I mean, a, you know, a 13 meter circle instead of a 15 meter circle, you should get dinged on that. You didn't actually do the movement that was required so yeah. you know yeah. you really should look at that and, and see you know really what the judge is telling you so it's a good point a good reminder too so Hillary what do we have what, what do we have next okay so speaking of regional championships Felicitas Mon- Monument Cosell uh, she's from my region and actually I mean dressed up the street the way that horse barns are dressed up the street but she has had a horse, Tonico de Top, that is um, 
uh, a horse that she's covered his journey from the time that they found him. Um, I believe, I know it's down in South America, down in Brazil, I want to say. Um, the title of the, the series that she did was, you know, from the rainforest to the dressage ring. And um, I have been following her both personally because she's a friend of mine and also just because the horse is fascinating. And they um, just did their last Grand Prix competition together. Um, and uh, I, I believe he ended up winning the freestyle, I think. But she had a really nice article on self-carriage um, in a recent issue. And I thought that she had a visual that she had heard before that she shared it was fantastic, where she talks about having a horse stretching in the neck. And her horse, which is, um, you know, has more of a Baroque conformation, it's always a difficult thing to get a quality top line. But her tip was to imagine that your horse is standing at the edge of a cliff peering over. So he's rocking back on his hind legs so as not to fall over the cliff, but he's able to get his neck out enough to see what's you know, over the edge. And I really like that visual that she gave us because I'm always telling people, you know, you you need to think about getting the hind leg balanced underneath them, but you need to think about stretching the neck so that, you know, the whole thing is kind of a package like that. And I think it's a, a very hard feeling for people to get. And I really like the way that she described it. Yeah, especially, you know, having ridden some of those Baroque types, PRE, Frisian, they really love to curl their necks up and get very mm -hmm. short. And so um, that that for anyone riding one of those or, or just, in, you know, a normal horse, that's a, that's a wonderful visual to sort of, you know, work towards that they've got to they've got to be balanced in their body. I always tell people, you know, be short from the wither to the croup to the tail. And be long, and you know, from the wither forward to the pole, you know, and that's that's the trick of getting a really, you know, balanced, collected horse is that their body has got to be collected, but that neck's got to be way out there, and the the horse has to be leading, leading with his nose, with his nostrils, and carrying you around the ring, um, you know, in in a really good rhythm. So um, that's a great tip from Felicitas. Yeah, I, I like it a lot. And it's so true with those bro courses. You, the next thing you know, they're right up in your chest, and you're like, "Uh oh, yeah. uh -oh this yeah. isn't good. This is not how <laughs> this is supposed to be." <laughs> no, that was fantastic. Well, and what was there was like a meme going around the internet, and I don't even know if she's the one who said it or if it's just a meme someone created, but that Charlotte Dujardin had where it shows her riding, and it says always feel as though, and I'm going to misquote this, but something like, you know, you want to feel as though you're pushing your hands away from you as you're riding. Um, and now I'm wondering if that even translates to what I uh, imagined it meant, but I thought that that was just also that same kind of visual is really neat of kind of just letting them stretch out, you know, feeling like you're lengthening the space between the withers and their pole. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've I've heard it, you know, a thousand different ways with uh, a lot of trainers because uh, I always, you know, I I always took the Frisian I was riding out to clinics and stuff because everybody has a little bit different perspective on on riding that type of horse. So I was able to get a lot of experience from a lot of trainers, and every single one, you know, says the same thing. You know, leave the mouth alone, let the horse carry you around the arena. You know, those types of things. And uh, I think we achieved. I mean, just as a personal thing we achieved that through doing a million transitions so well hillary you have a couple contests to tell us about yeah so um speaking of maternity leave i also heard that silva martin um just had her baby boy as well so we're creating a philip a whole new generation of male riders for you to <laughs> that's perfect populate. yeah the more guys the better we need to be we're always overwhelmed um but she and her husband, Boyd, are also um, doing a contest with Dressage Today where you can win a clinic with them, and that's something that's going on right now. So uh, everyone can go ahead and sign up, and then you and your friends can ride with them, and I think that that's really cool. Um, and then the other contest we have uh, is also equally interesting. It's um, Outfit Your Rise, so you get a saddle, a bridle, and a riding outfit. Uh, so, you know, from head to toe, speaking of Louise, <laughs> poor thing, I wish the contest had ended today yeah, and she had won it because she had everything. 
Yeah. <laughs> um, so those two things are going on um, over, I guess, this winter and fall, whatever you call it now. Um, and so everyone should go to dressagetoday.com to check them out. Fantastic. And Hillary, how would our listeners find you online? Um, you can not only go to the website, as I just mentioned, but also you can look at uh, Facebook and YouTube, Pinterest, and Twitter. Fantastic. Well, it's super to have you back. We look forward to next month. Okay. Thanks so much. Total Saddle Fit, the shoulder relief girth that Reese and Philip both love. And here's why. The Saddle Fit solution you have been waiting for is finally here. TotalSaddleFit.com is proud to introduce the shoulder relief girth. This strategically shaped girth actually moves the girth line of your saddle back over one inch, thereby freeing your horse's shoulders from the saddle. Traditional girths pull saddles up against a horse's shoulders and often over the top of the shoulders. The shoulder relief girth's recessed ends allow for the billets to buckle into the girth farther back to give your horse unparalleled freedom of motion. We are so certain that your saddle will fit better and your horse will be more comfortable that for a limited time we are offering a 30-day, 110% money-back guarantee. If you are not totally satisfied with your shoulder relief girth, send it back for a full refund plus 10% of the purchase price. Don't wait. Order now for the best saddle fit solution available. At totalsaddlefit.com. Visit totalsaddlefit.com. Well, that is, we're just so happy to have Hillary back. Uh, we really missed her, and it's great to have her back and hear about being a mom and, and what she's up to. So that was super fun. And as always, send us emails and Facebook shout-outs. We love them, and we work on answering them on the air whenever we can. Yeah, just a little a little talk about that. I, I said, the what, what was it, maybe two, three weeks ago, we talked about being very close to be, having um, 3,000 likes on yeah. our Facebook page. And then all of, you know, thanks to all of our listeners who sort of jumped on that. Now we have like thirty two hundred. So I, we zoomed past, I had a goal of three thousand sort of in my head for a while, and uh, and now we have we have a whole a whole lot more people showed up. So, anyways, awesome. you know, thanks for that. You know, thanks for our listeners, and uh, you know, getting our Facebook Glenn presence out Philip, there. Yeah, Glenn and Philip <laughs> who update the Facebook page. I, I that's not me. That's technical. <laughs> and I don't do that. So um, we have photos of us together, right? Whenever yeah, we're hanging out. Exactly. So thank you guys for keeping that up. And we try to keep uh, whatever's going on or if there's something in the news, we try to put that up on the Facebook page. So like us if you haven't. We would love that. And you can find our show notes and links to today's guests on our website, dressageradio.com. Like us on Facebook, just search Dressage Radio Show. Follow us on Twitter at Horse Radio. My website is maplecrestfarmky.com. And my email, feel free to email me, is reese at horseradionetwork.com. You can find me at philipparksequestrian.com. And my email is philip at horseradionetwork.com. I'd like to thank our sponsors for allowing us to put on another great show. And don't forget to check out all the other shows on the Horse Radio Network at horseradionetwork.com. Everybody, keep your heels down and your shoulders back and enjoy Para next week. <laughs>